Okay, so to continue from my last video, I'm just gonna finish up, uh, finish up, you know, solving some basic logarithms, and then I'm gonna talk about, you know, rewriting, uh, or solving logarithms when, or solving exponents when a logarithm is the exponent. So let's just do some more quick examples. So let's say I was given log 343 seven and you know log base 343 of seven and we want to figure out you know what power must 343 be raised to to get seven so it's it's 343 to what to what power to get seven well one key thing i'm looking at is you know before you know if i had like log base you know seven of 49 you know it was always a you know this was it was always a basically a whole number it was like two because this, you know, this number, it was bigger than the base, you know, but, you know, 343, well, you know, that can't be necessarily raised to, you know, 1, or sorry, 343 can't be raised to 1 to get 7, and, you know, if we square this, it's going to be an even bigger number, so what must we raise it to to get 7? So, you know, when the base is bigger, you know, than the number you're taking the logarithm of, it, you want to start working with fractions. That's when you want to start thinking about square roots. So, you know, if I'm thinking of 343, well, I want to start working with fractions. So you, let's start with one half, just a pretty general fraction. You know, you don't, it's normally going to be like one half, one third, one fourth, so on and so forth. So let's start with one half. Well, you know, if I do that, you know, I get something like, if I plug that into a calculator, I get 18.52 blah blah blah. Okay, well let's try again. Let's let's now go down an exponent. So so basically instead of one half, I'm gonna go down to one third. And you know if that didn't work, then I'd go to one fourth. And if that didn't work, I'd go to one fifth. So let's try 343 to the one third. So if I plug that into my calculator, 343 to the one third power, I get seven. So that's my answer right there. So it's it's just one third. So 343 and one third, because what's happening is remember remember what this is asking. It's saying 343 to the one third or 343 to what gives me seven. 343 to the one third gives me seven, and that's it. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so let's try another one. One that's a little more complicated. So what's let's say I had log six. 1 over 216 equals what? Well, what's the answer to this? Okay, well, we have a fraction as our answer. So, you know, let's just approach this like we normally would. You know, 6 to the first, that gives me 6. 6 squared, that gives me 36. Okay, um, 6 cubed. Well, what is 6 cubed? You know, if we plug that in, it, that just can be 216. So, Let's bear this in mind. So, you know, we're not getting any fractions here. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe we can try a, maybe we can try an x or a fraction as an exponent. So, you know, we get the square root of six. That's not really going to work. Six to the one third. That gives me cube root of six. And ne neither of these are giving me fractions. So, when you know when the uh, the number you're taking the log of is an exponent or sorry, it's, it's a fraction, you want to start thinking of negative exponents. So, look over here. Look over at 6 to the 3rd equals 216. And I'll, I'll rewrite that over here on the right-hand side. 6 to the 3rd equals 216. This is awfully close to 1 over 216. But is there anything we can do to make this 1 over 216? And the answer is yeah. If I raise this to a negative 3, well, that's the same thing as if I did, you know, if you have a negative exponent on a number, you can simply just bring it down. So that's 1 over 6 cubed. And that's 1 over, well, what is 6 cubed? 6 cubed, like we established over here, is 216. So that's 1 over 216. So our answer, you know, our answer is simply just negative 3. Just negative 3. So again, going back up here, when you have a number that's bigger than your, or smaller than your base, you want to start thinking of fractional, uh, fractional exponents. When you have a number that's like, you know, you're, taking the log of a fraction, you want to start thinking of negative exponents. And this is usually the case. And, you know, they're always going to be, you know, for these fraction ones, 
uh, the fraction answers, it's always going to be like, you know, one third, one fourth, one fifth, typically. And then here, you know, it'll work out pretty nicely, like negative three or negative two. Um, you know, just for, let's say I had log base six of 30, uh, sorry, one over 36. Well, what is that? Well, you know, then I could just think, well, six squared equals 36. That's close, but if I want to bring this down, if I want to make it 1 over 36, I would just say 6 to the negative 2. Well, that's just 1 over 6 squared, and that's 1 over 36. So my answer is just negative 2. So these are just some quick examples. So now let's do two more examples that are a bit harder, and they normally trip students up the most when they first start dealing with logarithms. OK, so let's say I was given mm, 12. 12 raised to the power, raised to the power, log base 12 of 144. So with this, let's just approach this logically. If I look at this inner part right here, well, log base 12 of 144, 12 to what power gives me 144? And that's just 2, right? 12 squared gives me 144. So the answer is just 2. So I could say, okay, well, this whole thing, this whole thing evaluates to two. So I write that a little neat, neat, neater. So that whole thing evaluates to two, so I get 12 squared. And that's just, well, what is 12 squared? 12 squared is 144. So that's my answer right there. Honestly, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty simple. But let's say I had a, let's say I had a different one. Let's say I had, I don't know, five, 5 base, or so 5 raised to the power of 5 to the 17th. Well, what does that become? So what you can do is there is a property. And notice what happened here. We All we could have done is we could have simply just crossed this part out, and we get 144. You can do that. You can do that as long as this number and this number are the same, as long as the the base of the exponent and the base of the logarithm are the same. When those two are the same, the only number, those it all just goes away, except this guy right here. So my answer is just 17. So my answer is just 17. So remember, you can only do that, though, when, let me circle this in green. You can only do that when the base of your exponent, this number, and the base of your logarithm are exactly the same. So that's, all, that's the only time it'll ever happen. OK, so let's try another one. So let's say I had, well, 9. Let me darken the, uh, sorry, look at that. Let me darken the color right here so you can see it a little bit better. 9 raised to log base 3 of 20. OK, well, remember, I can't just cross this out and say 20 because you know, the, this number and this number are not the same. So what I have to do here is I have to rewrite this so that they are the same. So I have to somehow reconfigure this 9 so that I would get a 3 here, and I could just match them up and cancel. So OK, well, 9 is the same thing as 3 squared, 3 squared, and then it's log base 3 of 20. OK, well, now keep this in mind. One of your properties of logarithms, which I hope you've already learned already, is that when you have, you know, when you have a logarithm and the number is raised to some power, then that logarithm, that exponent, or that power, just gets kicked out to the front. So it's n log m. So basically just gets kicked out to the front, or vice versa. So if I have a number in front, you know, if I have n log m, then that number can be just raised to the power of m. So I could just have m to the n. So this works both ways right here. This works both ways. So you know, if you have the exponent, it can just come out front. If it's already out front, it could just go back on top of that m. So right here, you know, I have 2 log 3 of 30. I have 2 log 3, uh, sorry, 2 log 3 of 20. So what I have to do here is 
since this is in front, this guy, you know, this 2 can just come up to the 20 and can be a power of 20. So I'd have 3 log 3 20 squared. Now, you know, since since this, the base of the exponent and the base of a logarithm are the same, since they're the same, since they're the same, then this all can all just cancel and I get 20 squared, and that would just give me 400. So 400 would be my answer. So pretty easy. And one thing, you know, one thing I need you to, or I need to stress is that most students, they will just you know, they'll see that, hey, this number and this number are the same, so they'll just cancel and they'll just say, hey, it's 20. Don't do that because it can only work if there is no number out front of this logarithm. It only works in that case. So this this property, you know, this property where you can just cancel stuff will only work if there is no, num no, no number in front of the logarithm. So in order to fill that prerequisite, or to satisfy it where there must be no number there, I just brought the two and uh, brought it up to the 20. That's all I did. Then I saw they were the same and I said 20 squared and I get 400 because 20 squared is equal to 400. Okay, so let's try one more example. So let's say I had 64, not right, uh, I'll draw a line right here. So 64, raised to log base 4 of 12. Okay, this one's a little more complicated, but let's rewrite this so I can get that 64 uh, in terms of a 4. So, you know, 4 squared is 16, but 64 is simply just 4 cubed. 4 cubed. So I get 4 raised to 3 log 4 of 12. And remember, you know, these two numbers are the same, but don't cancel because that 3 must come on top of the 12. It must go on top of it as an exponent. So I have 4 raised to the power of log base 4 of 12 cubed. Now, you know, now you see that this the base of the exponent and the base of the logarithm are the same. So then my answer, it's just 12 cubed. And 12 cubed, that happens to evaluate to, if you plug that in your calculator, it's... 1,728. And that's it. So, you know, before, you know, if you, if you had, you know, they were the same, if they were the same, already the same, you could just cancel and you get 144 or something like this. If they were the same here, you just cancel these out, you get 17. If they're not the same, you know, if the base of the exponent and the base of the logarithm are not the same already, you have to do some manipulation like I did. And once you have the you know, once you have a 3 here and a 3 there, you bring that 2 out front, and then uh, out front you apply it as a power to this 20, then you see they're the same, and then you can do that canceling thing. So again, the same rule, but in these ones I just had to do a bit of, you know, a bit of just manipulation for these last two right here. So again, hope this helps. If you have any requests for other videos you want me to do, feel free to let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.